This video is an in-depth look at faith, belief, and obedience. What does it really mean to believe in Christ? What is faith? Romans 3.28 says, Therefore we conclude that man is justified by faith without deeds of the law. Galatians 2.15-21 says, Knowing that a man is not justified by works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For by works of the law shall no flesh be justified. Belief is also confused by false teaching. So what is faith? Short answer, faith, belief in Christ equals obedience. It's not intellectual belief in Jesus, but a heartfelt trust in Jesus by obedience. Likewise, disobedience to Christ equals unbelief, no faith. Once again, we look to the Old Testament Hebrew for contextual meaning, since Abraham's, Abraham's faith and the unbelief of the Israelites coming out of Egypt is often cited. Number one, Abraham's faith. Genesis 15, 6, And he believed in the Lord, and he counted it to him for righteousness. The Hebrew word is Amen. This means to support, confirm, be faithful, trust. Abraham's faith is further explained contextually, Genesis 26.5. Because that Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. The Hebrew word is Shammai. Abraham Shammai my voice. These New Testament, in the New Testament, these concepts are translated into Greek. Romans 4.3 What saith the scripture? Abraham pastuil God, believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Hebrews 11.8, like Genesis 26.5, gives contextual meaning to Abraham's faith. It reads, By faith Abraham, when he was called to go out to a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, Hupakuyo obeyed, and he went out, not knowing whither he went. Abraham's faith was obedience to God. He did what God told him to do. He didn't just say, okay, I believe in God, and do nothing. You see, believe and obedience are tied together. Number two, the faithless Israelites in the wilderness. Unbelief and disobedience are tied together. We know they rebelled and fell into idolatry and grumbled at Moses. That generation perished in the wilderness. Hebrews 3.19 explains this. Disobedience equals unbelief. While it is said today, if ye hear his voice, harden not your heart, as in the provocation. For some, when they heard, did provoke, howbeit not all that came out of Egypt by Moses, but with whom he was grieved forty years, was it not them that sin whose carcasses fell in the wilderness and to whom swore he that they should not enter his wrist rest but to them that believe not so we see they could not enter in because of unbelief hebrews 319 tells us they did not enter because of apistia unbelief unbelief and disobedience are tied together now let's look at john 336 he that postuyo believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. He that apatheo does not obey, believeth not the Son, shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. King James. Apatheo refuse belief and obedience, not comply. King James translates this verse, believeth not. Now, modern versions use not obey in John 3.36. So it reads like this. Whoever believes the Son has eternal life. Whoever does not obey the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God remains on him. Once again, the Israelites didn't obey God and they didn't enter because of unbelief. Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Abraham obeyed God. You see, the Old Testament defines faith for us. It ties obedience to God and belief in God or faith in God. They obey His voice. 
Now let's look at other scriptures that contextually support obedience equals faith equals belief. Jesus told a parable of the house built on the rock versus the house built on the sand. He likened those who kept his saying to building the house on the rock. Those who didn't got destroyed. Matthew 7, 24 through 29 and Luke 6, 46 through 49. Hebrews 5, 9. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto them that obey him. Acts 5.32 And we are his witnesses of these things, and so also is the Holy Ghost, whom God hath given to them that obey him. John chapter 10, 27-28 My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish, and neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. John 15, 5-6 I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him the same bring forth much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. If a man abideth not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered. And men gathered them, and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. Real faith, real belief is to obey Jesus and his words. It's not intellectual belief about Jesus. Most people know about Jesus, that he came and died for sins, but few follow him and keep his word. Few are followers of Christ. Christ wants followers of him. If you love me, keep my commandments. Again, faith in Christ means being a follower of him, denying yourself, keeping his word. Why is this important? False teachers preach a watered-down counterfeit gospel of just believe in Jesus without obedience. Many are King James only people and preach all you have to do is believe, citing John 3.16. Most people think this is a superficial intellectual affirmation. They don't realize believe the gospel means obey the gospel. They don't know that wrath abides on those not obeying the gospel. And this is what is taught. We all sin. All you have to do is just believe. And some even refute repentance and holy living as work salvation. Some even dilute the meaning of repentance to only mean changing your mind. You see, real repentance means stopping it, turning from it, and making amends. Shuv. Acts 26.20. 20, Matthew 3.8. The fruit of this just believe teaching is superficial confession of Christ without obeying the gospel. They don't repent. This is often accompanied by once saved, always saved salvation. That is, after you said a prayer, you can't lose your salvation. However, Scripture warns Christians not to continue sinning. Lots of Scripture. Scripture warns about hell for the unrepentant. It commands a pursuit of holiness. Righteous living, living guided by the Spirit. Also, Scripture warns against grieving or quenching the Spirit with sin. Do not backslide. Summary Faith, belief, and obedience are tied together. Real faith in God is obeying what He tells you to do. Now, He has already given us His written word to study and obey. He talks to us in many ways, and these should align with His written word. His sheep hear his voice and they follow him. They abide in him. Those who believe are doers of his word. They keep his word. They obey the gospel. It's not an intellectual belief that Jesus died for sins. Real belief, real faith is to live his word. They don't stay in the world and sin. Believers obey his commandments to love God and their neighbor. They show mercy. They forgive. They repent too. They come out of the world to serve God and try to fulfill the will of God. False teachers, however, confuse the meaning of belief, and people think it's just an intellectual belief in Jesus without obedience to the gospel. James calls this dead faith. Faith without action is dead. People need to obey the gospel. Scripture also warns against continuing in sin. Therefore, repent. Jesus commanded it. He has 
no desire that anyone should perish, but all that come to repentance. This will be the end of this video. Please pick up your cross daily and follow him, and heed the voice of the Holy Spirit. Amen.